Welcome back to the show. Well, he's boldly going where he has not gone before to tread the boards of the West End stage. The childhood of George Takei, perhaps best known for playing Lieutenant Sulu in Star Trek, has inspired a musical about Japanese Americans being interred in the United States during the Second World War, called Allegiance. Now 85, George plays the dual role of the show's fiercely patriotic protagonist, Sam Kimura, as well as Sam's ailing grandfather. Arts editor of Express Online, Stefan Karazis, caught up with him pre-show and began by asking him what the show was based on. Well, um, on uh, December 7th, 1941, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. It was a devastating bombing which uh, threw the entire United States into war hysteria and racism. Mm -hmm. Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and there were Americans who happened to look just like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor. I was five years old at the time, and I really didn't understand what was going on until that terrifying morning when my father came into the, the bedroom that I shared with Henry, my brother, dressed uh, hurriedly, and told us to be in the, play in the living room while he and my mother uh, uh, did some last minute packing, and suddenly, we saw two soldiers marching up our driveway, carrying rifles with shiny bayonets on them. Henry and I were frozen with terror. My father came out, answered it, and at gunpoint, at bayonet point, they told him to get your family out of here. That was my introduction to this life-changing experience. And they took all the, the, the Japanese Americans who were American citizens. We were Amer some absolutely American citizens, born and raised. We had them. nothing to do with Pearl Harbor. And you were taken to camps. You were, you, your homes, your livelihoods, everything, so much was lost. You came out of those camps with very, very little. Um, and it's a story that hasn't really been told. And there were no charges, no trial, in the most undemocratic way. We were simply rounded up by executive order signed by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and put into 10 barbed wire prison camps in the most desolate, God-forsaken places. So they took our money, destroyed my father's business, took our home because we, uh, we didn't pay uh, the mortgage, and imprisoned us. It was uh, the most un-American, to, to use mm -hmm. an overused word, that the government was uh, uh, perpetrating on us. And that is the dramatic crux of our story, how divisive the government's behavior was on uh, not only the Japanese American community, but how individual families were fractured. And we turned this dark chapter of American history into a musical where we have production numbers, singing and dancing, high kicking, because that, too, is organic to this story. Every classic musical has a great story. Uh, Les Miserables is about the French Revolution. West Side Story is about gang warfare in Manhattan. So we are about this dark period in, in American history when innocent American citizens who happen to look like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor are imprisoned and tortured and uh, subjected to the most excruciating punishment when they are absolutely innocent of any charge. You're obviously very active on, on social media, but I was also loving the fact that in the show we have a, a, a Japanese-American marrying a very white or falling in love with a very white nurse. Your own story is, is a wonderful parallel for that. And I love the fact that you said, you tweeted famously that, you know, when I was growing up, we weren't allowed to marry white girls. And now, what did you do? I married a white man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was another campaign of mine because uh, we are entitled as in individual human beings to the same kind of stability and happiness, access to happiness mm -hmm. and joy uh, in our relationships, uh, d despite the d difference in our orientation. And, and how long have you two been together? 37 years now. What, and what is the secret to that? 
Well, uh, I'm lovable. <laughs> of course. The worst, I'm very argumentative. <laughs> you have some opinions about things? I do indeed. <laughs> and, and the secret to any type of long relationship, because it's all the same at the end, what's the secret? You know, it's, it's acceptance of our complexity, mm -hmm. understanding that we are human beings and we have uh, our idiosyncrasy. You're a handsome man of 60, 60. How old are we now? I'm 85, there pushing we go. 86. 80, <laughs> pushing 86 this year, hugely active and, you know, to steal a phrase, how does one live long and prosper at, <laughs> at, at, at 86? I uh, exercise regularly, eat properly, never smoke. Uh, Brad and I are both uh, run were uh, runners. Uh, okay. Brad had done two or three marathons. I had never done, done a marathon. And I asked him to train me for my first marathon, and that's how our relationship began. I finished that marathon, and now we've been doing the marathon of life together. <laughs> <laughs> You're very active on, on social media, which, you know, things people my age or older, you know, we, we find a minefield and complicated, and you are absolutely out there and, and you, you're, you're building this huge following because I, people trust you, you have something to say, and, and how important is this to you, your platform and, and what you're t you talk about? This is what my whole life has been, been about. It was the failure of our ideals, and we have to be engaged in our democratic process. Is there a line on freedom of speech? Is there a line on what's acceptable? I believe in freedom of speech. But freedom involves responsibility, taking the consequences of what, what you say and do. But in social media, there is anonymity, and there's no responsibility because of the anonymity. And people can say the meanest thing, sure. the cruelest thing, the most grotesque thing to sensitive people, teenage girls, and they're devastated. That is the problem with uh, social media. There, no one takes this responsibility. That is the crux of the problem. And I would say respect, possibly, and telling the truth also would be nice. Absolutely. Respecting yourself so that you respect others. That doesn't exist. It's the Wild West with masks on. People, uh, unknown people, and anonymous people uh, saying vicious, cruel things, lies, and not being responsible at all. There's a lot of backwards and forwards between you and William Shatner, which is <laughs> entertaining, to say the least. And, and, and you've, you've, did the two, I just wonder, because you must see each other all the time at conferences and things like that. Do we, do we conferences, just, that do we, makes do it we, dignified. Do, so we call them conventions. Conventions. <laughs> do we just walk past and do a little Star Trek? We say hi. Simple. Well, we, you know, we, as we pass each other in the corridor. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for welcoming me onto your, your stage. Welcome from us to you to London. Well, thank um, you very much. And thank you for sharing some of your story with us. Um, and we look forward to seeing where this goes next. Thank you. I have enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.